Hi, so I was asked to look at Victor Petrick and his wonderful way of making graphene. Um, but I thought about it a bit, and actually there's some really interesting chemistry that goes on around that. So I thought I would look at the chemistry, really, and then talk about how that could possibly be used and how Victor Petrick could possibly be using it. Now, what I've got here is a mixture of potassium permanganate and sulfuric acid. Now, that is really unstable, so <laughs> you don't want to go making that up. Oh, health and safety. So this is for demonstration purposes only, uh, educational purposes as well. So you please don't repeat it at home. If you're going to repeat it and you're a qualified chemist, then please do remember to wear all your safety gear. Okay, that covered. So there is potassium permanganate and sulfuric acid in there, concentrated sulfuric acid in a 50-50 mix. And I don't know if you can see it's fuming a little bit. So it's a very unstable mixture, that, and it has some really interesting properties. So here I've got a little piece of tissue, and if I drop a drop of that onto the tissue, then what we've provided it with is a fuel, an oxidant, and it automatically reacts. And, and that will do that with any fuel that happens to be there. Now, in itself, that's not particularly wonderful, but let's put a little spot of that on there. And what I've got in here is um, ethanol, just ordinary alcohol. <laughs> so, that is a very unstable mixture. And it will just explode when you mix the two together. So you have to be extremely careful with that stuff. Let me just put that out of the way, actually. You have to be extremely careful with that stuff. But it's quite fascinating stuff in its own way and leads you to think about um, what that could be used for. Because like that, it's all just too inst instantaneous. And the question you have to ask yourself is, can we slow that down? Well, yes, we can. Because what I've got here is some potassium permanganate. Now, obviously, ethanol is a, a light liquid, and so it does tend to react fairly quickly. This is glycerin, vegetable glycerin for all our vegetarian chemists. And if I put a little bit of glycerin in the center of that pile of potassium permanganate, and it'll take a little while to get going. So we're just going to give it a chance. It is actually worth it. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> really awesome. Very violent reaction, very hot reaction, but it has time. And of course, when you're doing reactions like this, you need time. When I dropped that on there and exploded immediately, no time to do anything. Here, I've got plenty of time to run away and get myself to a bit of safety because it happens so slowly. Now, that actually is a fuse. It's a chemical fuse. So we can use that to do other things. Now, what I've got here is a mixture of magnesium powder and potassium permanganate. So if I put that on there... And this is a 50-50 mixture. Oops, make my little well. And this one is also particularly awesome, but I am going to stand out of the way for this one. <laughs> it's certainly like to everything. I mean, chemistry it really is awesome. So we can use that material as a fuse. Now, obviously, we did that with um, magnesium powder, which makes a flash powder. But you can do that with um, aluminium powder and iron oxide, and that is, in fact, the thermite reaction. So I'm going to do a video on the thermite reaction, but it needs a little bit more health and safety than this, because it gets up to about 
2,500 degrees is exceedingly violent. So I need to be a bit more careful with that. So I'm going to do a separate video where I use that mixture as a fuse to start the thermite reaction. So we can use that material that's perhaps quite explosive, but we can adjust it so that we get a delay in when the reaction happens. And then we can use that delay in order to do something else, like the flash powder. Now what Petrick did, I think, and this is, I think, what the, is at the basics of what Petrick did, rather than exactly what he did. And what I've got here is, again, potassium permanganate, but this time it's mixed with pre-intercalated graphite. And I made the pre-intercalated graphite the same way in the video, how to make expanded graphite. So if you need to know how to do that, then that's what you do. And it's, again, it's a mixture 50-50 potassium permanganate and pre-intercalated graphite. Now, the glycol reaction is quite slow because it has um, a very heavy molecule. It takes a bit of time to get up there in terms of its heat, and then it reacts quite slowly. You saw that the ethanol was something that reacted extremely quickly. So what I've got here is ethylene glycol. So it's kind of halfway between those two. It's a much lighter material. This stuff actually is used as brake fluid. So I'm going to put the ethylene glycol into that little pit there and then stand out of the way and we'll see what happens. Isn't that awesome? So that, I think, is um, what Petrick was actually doing. Perhaps not he played around with that little bit so we didn't get that flame. The flame is the characteristic purple flame of potassium, incidentally. And what it does is it takes that graphite and exfoliates the graphite into this mass of exfoliated graphite. Anyway, I thought I'd show you a little bit about um, explosive chemicals, how to use them as fuses, and how to use those fuses to initiate other reactions, particularly on the exfoliation reaction. So I hope that was of interest for you. I will be doing the thermite reaction, and thank you very much for watching.